So welcome to the second series of High Street Histories, where the focus will be on the south side of Lowestoft, looking at some of the special buildings, houses and shops in the area. I'm Dean Parkin. And I'm Ivan Bunn. So Ivan, we're starting our tour the south end of London Road North at the former post office building, aren't we? Yes, we are indeed. Yeah, this is an interesting building for many reasons. It's the first general post office in Lowestoft and it is a Grade 2 listed building. And it's certainly undergone a lot of restoration work in the last few years, hasn't it? It has indeed. The first post office, the first general post office in Last House was opened on this site in 1872 in a large house that stood back from the street. It actually had lawns and a drive in front of it. And it wasn't until 1883 that a purpose-built post office was built on these lawns. Okay. If you could go back to the 1870s and early 1880s, opposite the post office, where we now have all the Victorian shops and terraces, there was one large estate called the Grove Estate. And on this map we can see down here at the bottom the post office is actually marked. And so if you came out of the post office, instead of looking at the shops that you see today, there was this huge six-acre privately owned estate by a Mrs Mary Rodham. And here's the house called The Grove. And when Mrs Rodham, she died and the estate was sold, everything was demolished, 600 trees were chopped down. Wow. And it was developed and streets were laid out. And one of the streets, of course, that was laid out um, is opposite Surrey Street today, went across the site of the house called The Grove, and that's Grove Road. Oh, I see. The next picture dates from about 1887. Here you can see a view from the roof of the Herring oh. and Mackerel Dock, yeah. looking due west, and this area here is the site of the Grove Estate. And here in the background, in the far distance, you can see the first post office. So if we zoom in, here you can see the single-storey post office, which still stands today as the ground floor of a three-floor building. And behind that, you can see the large house that in 1872 became the first general post office in Lowestoft. So strange to think it was built one floor at a time. Yeah. It just looks like it's always been a three-storey building. Yeah, as well as that, I also see the growth of the post office, a first floor being added, then later a second floor being added. It's just a, um, a sign of the growth of the town. So we've got a picture now of the post office a few years later. Yeah, this is the very early 1900s, looking up London Road North. You can see now the single-storey building has a second floor Oh, yes. on it. You can see some of the trees here that are still remaining from yeah. the old um, Grove estate but opposite where we once had the fence of the Grove and all the trees we've now got Mullingar Terrace which oh. is um, where all the shops are yes. uh, today. So let's see what that view looks like in 2024. Yeah and here we can now see the refurbished post office is now boasting a second floor. Yes. Again an indication of how um, the, with the growth of the town economically, the post office needed to grow in parallel with it. Now, if we head towards the bridge and time travel back to the early 1900s, opposite the railway station, we'd be able to see this building. Yeah, this is um, a hotel that opened by a Mr. Falsham. This whole terrace that you see here on Denmark Road was built on land that was left over after the railway um, was built and Denmark Road was laid out and these rather upmarket houses and shops were built. <laughs> well, it's, it's quite a distinctive building, isn't it? It, look, it looks quite... A, it's got those nice features, hasn't it? Like the, the big gas lamp over the door and it's got that curved end to it. It's, it's quite yeah, eye Yeah, th this photo probably dates from the very late 1890s, I should think. And of course, if you're not familiar with that area... Um, because it's changed so much today. On your left, you've got um, Denmark Road and the railway station, and on the right, um, just round the corner there, you're in Bevan Street. Yeah. Now, it wasn't Falshams for too long after this photo was taken, was it? And soon after, it became known as the 
Imperial Hotel. So how did that happen, Ivan? Apparently, um, Mr. Falsham went bankrupt um, in 1902. Henry Reeve Everett got hold of the property. He put a manager in there, and quite a lot of work was done to expand expand it and make it um, a much bigger hotel. Then the license was transferred to Mr. Philip Back, uh, uh, quite a well-to-do and well-known Norwich um, wine merchant. Um, And then in 1913, um, Everett actually sold the property to uh, Mr. Back, and that's when it became known as Back's Bars. If you go to the next picture, um, you can see quite substantial alterations were made. It took up the whole of the block, um, yeah. And this is when uh, Mr. Back had it. And we know certainly that after um, he became the manager, 1904, um, it was improved a lot. The two gardens that you see at the front were laid out and became known as the Summer and Winter Gardens. Oh, very and nice. They were actually roofed in. And um, we know, for instance, from the newspaper lists of visitors to Lowestoft that in August 1903, over 55 people were staying in this hotel. So there, there right. were a lot of changes yeah. to the property. So it continued um, certainly into the 1930s and then into the 1940s. And then uh, during the Second World War, yeah. uh, this happened, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. So this is on the, on the 10th of April, 1941. A number of German bombs had dropped on the area, and this one landed in the road on top of the underground lavatories where some people were killed as well. As you can see from this photograph, extensive damage was done. The whole facade um, of the hotel itself was totally battered and damaged. The hotel was patched up, wasn't it? Yeah, well, according to newspaper reports, the rooms on the first and second floor were sealed up and never opened again. And yeah. The whole property in the summer of 1972 was bought up by some local businessmen who decided to completely change it and it evolved into what really we see today. Apart from the corner by Bevan Street, there's very little resemblance to the original Falsham's yeah. Hotel, Imperial Hotel or Bax Bars. Yeah. yeah, they did at least keep the curved end to the building on the Bevan Street corner. Yes. Yeah.